Good morning, Ashley here on the 8th of February 2021. Welcome to the Daily Stoic Recovery Podcast. Did that make you feel better? You cry, I'm suffering severe pain. Are you then relieved from feeling it if you bear it in an unmanly way? Seneca's Moral Letters 78.17 So, continuing, we're to control our passions and emotions this month in February. And Seneca's pointing out that there's actually the crying and the complaining and the anger and the shouting raising the question does it actually make you you feel better when you respond in this way so how do you feel about that when someone cuts you off in traffic how do you respond to that you might feel triggered you might wave your hand and give it a bit of a yell and then you might you might drive along and you might continue to curse your curse that driver who just cut you off and you can feel your body change and angry and you're telling the person next to you about all the drivers all the crazy drivers and why it's always you why it's always you that gets cut off and then you're going to work you might go into work and then tell all your co-workers about that person who cut you off and go into the breakout area while you're making your coffee and tell them about it about this morning and continue and continue complaining and crying so it's asking yourself using an example does that actually make you feel better and reflection and you might feel like it, it actually does you know people tell me all the time like shouting at someone or yelling at someone or complaining about something that they believe it makes them feel better um, but for me that's it's not it's not you that it's making you feel better it's your ego you're satisfying your ego you're unaware of that that point and it's that seed, as I taught yesterday, it's that seed you plant. When you keep giving water to that seed, it grows and grows. And if you're unaware of your ego and unaware of that seed, you'll just keep feeding it, unaware that you've been complaining about the same thing for 20 years. You might have had an argument with your sister or whoever, a friend and of a small trivial thing and yeah, you're not spoke to them and you're carrying carrying this on and then 20 years later, you're still holding a grudge for that person and all that, um, unaware of all that time that's been wasted with that, with that anger, with that with your thoughts of what they did to you 20 years ago and how how nasty they were and how it made you feel and how you'll never forgive them and yeah holding on to that so there's a couple of examples um, and with me many experiences through my life where I've had grudges with someone or something or a place or some time and I've sort of carried it on, I've held on to it, I've complained about it, actually make it actually thinking that it actually makes me feel better if I hold on to that grudge. Um, and 
I saw, I saw that as justice. I saw it as justice that I had created this illusion that if I, the more I complained about something, the more I placed emotion onto that thing that upset me two, three years ago, it will that will heal. It will heal. It, that will help the healing. But in actual fact, it just creates resent. It creates anger. It creates and what you do you attract the same thing through your thoughts and feelings and emotions towards what I thought happened to you 20 years ago for me when I got fired off places in my 20s you know three years ago when I got fired from Tui I held on to that event I placed emotion onto the people that were involved and I placed resent onto that thing and I complained internally in my head. I was cursing his head. I was, and outwardly I was complaining to people over the phone and other people and in verbally. And I actually feeling, actually under thinking that that was actually making me feel better. Um, not understanding how self-sabotaging it was and the thing is it's not if something if you see something today and it makes you angry and you sort of disagree with something and you might feel triggered um, and yeah there's a conception that actually being triggered is you should avoid being triggered at all costs. You should, you should, you know, stay away from places that makes you trigger. You know, when I was in recovery from my gambling, you know, that was one of the things that we spoke about is um, ha avoiding sort of situations where I felt triggered to gamble. But last few weeks, I sort of felt thought about it differently. I think and. Okay, instead of trying to move, move the trigger, trying to remove that place and, and, and avoiding that place in that time or event or that, then people, how about I look at the source of it and look at, look at it deep and thinking about, okay, why am I feeling triggered? And actually, is a trigger actually the the is actually feeling triggered good or bad or is it how we respond to that trigger that causes going to the gambling going to the pornography going to the drink cigarettes going to the anger and um, responding because the trigger isn't the good or bad thing it's the it's the response it's how you respond it's how you act it's who you are, who you, who you become. So with self-control, the Stoics don't talk about like it's, it's definitely human nature to be triggered by something. But how how long that lasts is a key. Is it just like if it's just like that 10 sec, 10, 15 seconds? Oh yeah, that that person pissed me off, um, and oh that thing hurt me and. Then you go. You, you take a. If you have the opportunity, you take a step, step back, and you. You become more aware of it, and you actually feel okay. Why am I feeling triggered? Is it going to make me feel better if I am actually angry to this thing or this person? And then. Slowly, you're. You'll feel more control. Because it's not. As Epictetus says, it's not things that upset us, it's our judgments of them. And it's not people that make us angry, it's our judgment that it makes us angry, it's our perception that it makes us angry. It's not things cannot make us angry. Things cannot make us feel unworthy. Things that can not make us feel um, unwanted. Things cannot make us feel worthy and 
in fear, things can that make us feel in lack. It's all a judgment, it's, it's a perception that we've built up from our 3D world, from our reality, from the opinions that we listen to and we take on as objective rather than being subjective. But let's focus on, yes, how we're responding to things that we disagree with, things that people say. And one strategy you could take is to be sympathetic to that person. If someone says something, if you read something on social media today, if you see something on the news or on the TV and the radio, and you're triggered, sympathize with that person and just know that they're, they're doing best. Everyone's doing the best with what they've got, I believe. I have a true belief that everyone is doing the best with what they got. What, the best with, the best, people are doing the best with what awareness they've got, what they've learnt. And once you've sort of come in that place, it sort of feel, it makes you, gives you a feeling of sympathy towards other people rather than judging that they should they shouldn't say that, they shouldn't do that, it shouldn't be that way, why are they doing that, they should do it this way. Instead, how about we are sympathetic to that and give them time, just listen to them, rather than judging that person and telling them, you know, you know don't gamble, you know, people, many people told me, like, stop gambling, actually, when, when I was mentioned that I was gambling, I said stop gambling. Did that have any effect? Not really, no. Because it's not, it's not from a, it's coming from a place of fear, it's that person is um, sort of judging that it's a gambling, that's a problem. So how I respond how I'd like to respond in the future to someone who says, you know, they've got the feel as I've got a problem with gambling, I would respond in a way of like, okay, that's great, you know, it's great that you've got this problem now, how can we solve it? You know, um, and yeah, can you be okay? Can you be okay with being a problem gambler can you be okay that that's a problem first rather than being thinking that it's good or bad gambling so can we accept can, can you accept that um, you have a choice can you accept you have a f full power of choice to do whatever you wish in life. And yeah, move, you can move. Once you get in this place of sympathy, you can move in a place that people will see you and they will say, they will feel your calm and your loving and your your love, your care, your kindness or your honesty and they will think in time some people might actually change but they're very l not, not, they're not going to make a sustainable change if you just tell them like to stop doing that thing to, it's like what if you're a parent and you tell a kid to like stop doing something in anger, do they? Is it actually true that they actually stop? They might stop doing it there and then, but do they do it again? Another time, and it gives you. It might give you a short term. Oh yes, that, a short term relief. But then the next day or next week, they're doing it again, and you do say, 
same thing and it becomes a pattern then it becomes a habit the more you do something the more it becomes a habit an addiction it becomes an addiction to rather than just letting it go just just letting it go just know that that, that whatever your children are doing that you believe is we shouldn't be doing is the best with what they've got that's the best they know they don't know they don't know the difference so come from a place of sympathy and love give them a hug listen to them see what they have to say so that's my take on self-control for today um, bottom line is not to judge just love just sympathy and as Seneca says you know but disclaimer by the way that I said you cry crying is not good or bad and that we're not saying that crying is bad and crying actually could can be a can be a, it's just a release of a story that's in your body um, but that depends um, on what is happening uh, and yeah just thought I'd put that out there that I don't believe that crying is good or bad um, and I don't believe we should avoid crying and it's like when you go to a toilet it's like you don't hold you don't hold it in you you release it it's just something that's been released from your body to create space and yeah bear it in a manly way whatever comes your way today be objective thing it's not things that upset us it's our judgments of them of it bottom line is things don't upset us and yeah thanks for watching today thanks for listening Ashley Simcock over and out love you